testing the sound. Testing the sound. Okay. So in this and uh, this stream now it's the mother art. Oh yes. The sound is fine. Um this is the last episode, let's say like that, of art. There are still two more um, streams related to art that I want to do, but this is like, uh, fi finally I've reached the modern art and this is very long. It's going to be the art of the 20th century and of course the beginning of 21st century, but mostly the 20th century. The first half is mostly the avant-garde art, and then the second half is the um, what we will call more like the contemporary art. At the end of this presentation, I will talk a bit about the literature, um, modern literature, so the literature of the 20th century. I'm not going to talk about contemporary literature, I will let that for the last stream. So I'm going to start it. As I say, this is very long. As you can see uh, here, also more than 1,000 pages. So just going to start now. Modern art. Modern art is a term that depicts the art of the 20th century and onwards. It represents the opposite to traditional art, and it is mostly an aesthetic concept. The end of it will be the postmodernist, where it is impossible to create anything original, only reinterpretations. There are many movements, and the production is so wide that it is impossible to know all. Here a map. Architecture. Well, uh, I explain how it's going to be this presentation. So first, I will talk about architecture, like the architectural styles that are only architecture and then when I talk about movements I will talk about painting, sculpture and architecture being painting the most important. Architecture. Modern architecture began with the skyscrapers and the Bauhaus and was also influenced by the pictoric movements and the use of new materials and these are all the different Styles like Art Deco, School of Bauhaus, Totalitarian, Functionalism, Rationalism, Organic, International Style, Neo Empirism, Neo Formalism, Brutalism, Postmodern, Content Constructivism, High Tech, and Ecotech. Art Deco is a popular design movement that happened between these years. It influenced in architecture and designs, but also in painting, sculpture, and cinematography. It is inspired in the first avant garde movements as Constructivism. Cubins and Futurins, but also from ancient Egypt, modern forms as, e as electric illumination, radio, and skyscrapers. <clears throat> United States, the most important buildings here are the Empire State and the Crisis Building, both in New York. Others are the Buffalo City Hall in New York, the Aceville City Hall in North Carolina, and the Bullocks Wilshire in Los Angeles. Here are the Examples. England, uh, well, here are different buildings in England, in Spain, Mexico, Buenos Aires, Argentina, Uruguay, New Zealand, and India. And here you see different examples. School of Bauhaus was a German school of architecture and design founded at Weimar by Walter Gropius that wanted to combine the Academy of Fine Arts and the Arts and Crafts, whose founder was William Morris. It says that there shouldn't be any difference between art and artisanry. Architecture and art should answer the necessities and influences of industrial modern world, no ornamentation. Harmony between function and design. It was established in Weimar, Dessau, and Berlin and their directors were Walter Gropius, Hannes Meyer, and Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. Bauhaus in the South, rectangular buildings of concrete and crystal functional ins. Other architects to name were Paul Klee, Kandinsky, Latzlo Moholinagi, Lionel Feinger, and Oscar Schlemmer. The school was closed by the Nazis. 
Meister Hauser, a complex of buildings of the Bauhaus in Weimar and the Sau, House and Horn built from the exhibition of the Bauhaus at Weimar, designed by George Mutsu, with collaborations of Meyer and Gropius. Maximum comfort with maximum function. Here you see the examples. Totalitarians. The totalitarian regimes had their own architecture. Stalin means architecture under the Stalin's years. The Stalin skyscrapers or the Seven Sisters as a are a complex of seven skyscrapers built in Moscow, a combination of Russian Baroque and Gothic. Here are the images, just some examples. Fascism, it was divided between modern and conservative, Cagliari in Italy. Nazism, Hitler wanted to make the Third Reich as the Imperial Rome, Salzburg Project, Flacto, here are just examples. The bunkers are a construction made with iron and concrete to protect from bombs of military and civilian use, and they were used in the World War II, not only in Nazi territory. Here are some examples. This bunker. Frank Kings. Patriotic architecture to exaltate the figure of the dictator. Valle de los Caídos, Anarco de la Victoria y Moncloa. So here you see this one and this one. Um, this. In a moment I'm missing this. I think I'm not missing anything else. Functional aims. In architecture, is the idea that the building should be designed having in mind the utility of the construction. It begins with Louis Sullivan in Chicago. If the function is satisfied, the architectonic beauty happens naturally. Authors from the rational aims as Le Corbusier of, or Mier Werner Roche were functional aims in the sense that their buildings were simplifications of other styles. It began to be discussed in the aesthetic field and it was used as a bad term. New architects see themselves as artists with a certain responsibility to make usable their buildings. The Corbusier and Mies van der Rohe will be explained in, uh, in Rationalism. Frank Gehry with Landing House, Frank Gehry, Seven Hall, Richard Mayer, and Eo Pink May. And just some examples. About Frank Gehry will appear later in another style, so it's not here. Rational limbs happened in Europe after World War I. Use of simple geometric forms and use of color instead of decoration. Use of materials and steel, concrete, and crystal. Le Corbusier in France, and here different buildings with Unité d'Habitation is his famous work, Duplex Rooms. And it's auto setting, so. Just a moment. This presentation is very long, so the audio series is going to take a bit. Also, I no, I have to show pictures from here, but I prefer to show later. Architecture goes fast. Here are the Unité de Habitación, and here from Spain. Rincón de Goya, Fuel Station, Nautical Club, and so on. And this one is important, the Mies Valner Roje Barcelona Pavilion. And this one. Organic architecture is about harmony between human habitat and natural world, integration in nature. Frank Lloyd Wright, with his falling water house, is the most known work, designed for the Kaufman family in Pennsylvania. Other of his works is the Guggenheim of New York. Here are the falling water house and the Guggenheim. Eric Gunnar Asplund, Arbar Alto, Javier Senosian, and Friedrich Kunderfasser. This one, the Conjunto Satellite, is very interesting, you will see. Here are some examples. This is the Conjunto Satellite, very interesting, and Hunter Barcelona. 
And finally, the Skoskirko Garden, a cemetery in a forest in Stockholm by architect Eric Gunnar Asplund and Sigurd Leverens. International style is a group of architecture that serves for its and functional in its forms. This is the result of industrialization, mechanic, engineering, and new materials. Walter Gropius, Mir van der Rohe, Le Corbusier, Rudolf Sindler, Philip Johnson, and Richard Neutro. Here are some examples. Kaufman House is very important. Scandinavian Neo Empirins or Neo Empirins is how is named the Scandinavian architecture, principally organic and humanist, combination of rural and urban. Chapel in the Forest by Eric Kunar Asplund and Sigurd Leverens. In Stockholm, perfect equilibrium between classicism, modernity, industry, and nature. Here are different Alvar Altos, Sven Gottfried Markelius, Bere Fern, and John Goodson. Here you see the examples. Here the Sydney Opera, very important. Neoformalism happened as a rejection to the limits of American modernism, taste, taste for classicism, but updating the elements of the past with new technologies and design. Cultural, institutional, and civil buildings, use of classical elements as arches, columns, but adding new construction techniques and designs from international style. Um, by the way, let check. But I didn't miss any correction. It was fine. Okay, it seems everything is fine. Uh, here are examples of Neo Marines with Edward Duren Stone, Philip Johnson, Minoru Yamazaki, National Geographic Museum, Lincoln Center, Twin Towers of World Trade Center. Brutalism. Brutalist architecture happened and at the beginning it was inspired by the work of Le Corbusier and Eero Sarinen. The term comes from French beton from French beton brut or crude concrete used by Le Corbusier for the selection of materials. These buildings have repetitive geometries with rogue aspect, where you can see the materials. Here you see Banco de Londres, America del Sur, Teatro Argentino, Museo de la Nación, Teatro Teresa Carreño, Roger Stevens Building. Here you see it mostly in Latin America. Postmodern. Postmodern architecture began in the 50s and still continues, coming back from the ornament and reference to formalist and international style. Use of the gabled roof and also very tall skyscrapers full of crystal. Here are some architects like Mitchell Grace, Carles, Charles Moore, Aldo Rossi, Adrian Smith, Helmut Jan, Peter Einsman, Cesar Pelli. Mostly, as you see, skyscrapers, this is the Burj Khalifa. The Mao Tower, here the Holocaust Memorial, Petronas Tower, Torre de Cristal in Madrid. The constructive beams was born at the end of the 80s. Fragmentation, not linear design, manipulation of surfaces and curved lines, distortion. Frank Gehrig with the Guggenheim Museum, Dancing House. Here you will see these buildings that have a, like this movement. Rem Kolja, Staha Hadid, Bernard Schumi, Daniel Liebeskin, Peter, Peter Eisenman, Himmelbau Group. Here are just more, more examples. Kaitets. It began in the 60s in Japan with the Metabolist Movement, where artists imagined futuristic buildings. Kenzo Tange, he believed that design should combine technology and humanity. St. Maria of Tokyo Cathedral, Jojoki Gym. Hiyonori Kikutake with the Tokyo Museum, Nakiso Kurokawa with Nakagi Capsule Tower. I really love this building, especially the Capsule Tower. Here you see, and this is the Capsule Tower. Others, just more other examples. And Ecotech, it happens because high tech buildings had extremely expensive maintenance. This architecture used natural resources. Um, just here some examples, here and here. Richard Rogers, Norman Foster, Ivo Bonilla.
Okay, now the movements, boss. First, I'm going to show more pictures here. Art Deco. Wow, how cool. Totally the rings. Functional rings. Rationalins Organic International style Neo MPDs Neo Formalis Brutalis Postmodern Reconstructive Beans I guess. Echo text. Okay, and now the well, this is first or nothing. And now the movements. So these are all the movements for beans, expressionist, expression is the longest, who beans, futurins, abstraction and neoplasticines, constructive beans, data in surreal lines, informal lines and neofiguration, pop art, neoreal lines, minimal lines, hyperreal lines, and postmodern lines. Postmodern lines also have some uh, divisions of uh, arts. And then finally, uh, finishing with the last tendencies that is the art in the 21st century. So let's start. Mm, movements. In the 20th century, there appeared many different movements, avant garde. The ones that will appear in this section are for beans, expressionists, cubins, photorins, abstraction, and neoplasticines, constructive beans, data ins, surrealins, informalins, and neofiguration, pop art, neorealins, minimalist, hyperrealins, and postmodernists. For beans, it happened uh, in these years and it is characterized by the free use of color, use of signing and pure tones and grid polychromy and chromatins. The critic called them fauves, that is savage beasts, due to the intense color of the paintings. Also, I say that in all these movements, I will talk mostly about painting, but also about um, sculpture and architecture when it is needed. Henry Matisse, he tries to express feelings with the use of color and form. Still, self-portrait, portrait, well, here just different artworks. Henry Matisse. André de Rain, influenced by post-impressionist, hobbyist and cubist. Maurice de Blaminck, author of Dramatic Landscapes. And Albert Marquette, just another author. André de Rain, Maurice de Blaminck and Albert Marquette. Kes van Dongen, great portraitist, he was member of the Fauvist and of the expressionist group Die Brücke. 
here some of his paintings, here's Van Dongen. No expression is but first. It's our picture, Henry Matisse. Andre de Rain. Maurice de Blamin. Albert Marquette. Yes, Van Dongen. And now expression in this is the longest. It's going to be like half or one third of the full presentation. It happened in this year and it reveals sorry. Expression is uh, it reveals the pessimistic side of the life generated by the historical circumstances of the movement, mainly because the world. In this circumstance circumstances, I think it's written like this. I don't remember on stage of the move of the moment, mainly because the world wars representation of emotion distorting and exaggerating the topics, psychological force and expression, dramatic scenes, tragedies, influence of primitivism, and a sculpture of and mask from Africa and Oceania. Painting I've divided the artists in various sections based in their groups of countries. Um, artists are divided in various sessions based in their groups and or countries. Presidents, James Ensor, phantasmagoric scenes and masked character. Edward Munz, he said that he dissect soul. The most usual topics he paints are tragedies and loneliness, anguish, death and erotics. So here are James Ensor and Edward Munz. The Brooke. This group was influenced by the arts and craft and the Jugend style, and also by artists as the post impressionists and Moons. There was also influence from German Gothic, African art, and Russian literature, intent intention of revolution. Artists like Ernst Ludwig Kircher, Erich Heckel, Karl Smith Rothkluf, Emil Nolde, Otto Müller, and Max Pechstein. Here you see examples of all of them. Their Blauer writer. This group claimed that art has to be an expression of the inside of the artist. Interest in mysticism, symbolism, and primitive popular childish and mentally ill art. Importance of music. Artists like Vasily Kandinsky, Franz Marc, August Macke, Paul Klee, Alexei von Jolensky, Marianne von Werchin, Lionel Feininger, Gabriel Munter, Heinrich Karp Kampendonk, and Alfred Kubin. Here are examples of all of them. Neue Sachlichkeit. This group was formed after, after World War I as a reaction against expressionists coming back to realist figuration. It disappeared with the rise of Nazis, magical realists. Artists like George Grotz, Otto Dix, Max Beckmann, Konrad Felix Müller, Ludwig Meitner, and Karl Hofer. And here you see an example of, of everyone. Germany saw artists weren't in any group, like Paula Modersohn, Becker, Lovis Corin, Christian Rolls, and Wilhelm Borger. Here you see examples of everything. Group of Vienna, influences of Jungenstil and Secession, and also from Symbolins, with artists like Egon Schiele and Oskar Kukowska. Here you see examples. School of Paris, these artists worked in Paris in the period between the two world wars, like Amedeo Modigliani, Marc Chagall, Georges Rouault, Jules Patsin, James Soutin, and Maurice Dutrillo. Here you see examples. Other countries, uh, artists per country, and um, artists per country. Argentina with Enrique Sovitz, Brazil with Candido Portinari and Anita Malfatti, Uruguay with José Cuneo Perinetti, Mexico with José Clemente Orozco, David Alfaro Siqueiros, Diego Rivera and Frida Kahlo, Ecuador with Osvaldo Guayas Amin, and United States with Edward Hopper, Max Weber, Grant Woods and Andrew Wiedt. Here examples of everyone.
Spain with José Gutiérrez Solana, France with Martel Gromay de Anthem Paul, Netherlands with Jan Sluiters, Leo Gestel, Charlie Toroff, Jan Wiegers, Hendrik Nicolas Werkman, Herman Kreider, Hendrik Chabot, Kes Van Donken, and then Italy with Lorenzo Viani, Ottoni Rosai, Mario Cironi, Gino Bonnici, Spione. Examples of everyone. Belgium with Gustave van de Boenstingne, Gustave de Smet, Fritz van den Berge, Constant Permeke, and Poland with Henry Kotli and Gustav Utkiecki, Czechoslovakia with Bohumil Kubista, Emil Fija and Antonin Prochazka, Hungary with Tiva Arkotska Kionvari, Sweden with Sigrid Kerten, Norway with Theodor Severin Kittelsen, and Finland with Axeli Geren Kalela and Tito Salinen. Culture. Artist reflected the topic and the formal distortion of expression in Ernst Barlach, Wilhelm Lembrook, Jate Colbit, and then others like Rudolf Edwin Belling, Otto Freundlitz, George Colbe, Ewald Wilhelm, Hubert Mataré, Bernard Hoetker, René Alice Sintenis, Emile Antoine Bordel, Sir Jacob Epstein, and Victorio Macho. As you see, there are a lot, a lot, a lot of artists. Here are examples of a few. And finally, architecture, use of new materials, use of bricks, steel, and crystal, experimental and utopic character, monumentality, and various groups. Main groups, the Deuster Werkbund, Art Based Rat for Kunst, The Ring, and Neues Bauen. Germany with Bruno Taut, Erich Mendelssohn, Fritz Hoger, Rudolf Steiner, and Hofeisen Sietlund. Amsterdam with Mitchell de Clare and Johan van der Meij. Here you see examples of everyone. Okay, this is Covim, so I saw pictures here first. James Ensor, Edward Muntz. Die Brücke, Kirchner, Eckel, Smith Rothluff, Emil Nolde, Otto Mueller, Mach Pechstein, Der Blauer Reiter, Vasily Kandinsky, Franz Mar, Macke, Paul Klee, Kowalenski, Perez Kim, Feininger, Munter, Kampendonk, Bubin, Neo Sachliskeit, Gross, Otto Dix, Max Beckmann, Felix Müller, Meitner, Karl Hofer, Motherson Becker, Lois Corinth, Rolls, Morgner, Bien Group with Evan Chile, Kokoska, School of Paris, Modigliani, Chagall, Roald, Passin, Soutin, Utrillo, other countries here, Argentina, Brazil, 
Uruguay, México y el Frida Kahlo, Ecuador, United States, Hopper, Weber, Woods, Wyatt, Spain, France, Netherlands, Switzerland, Italy, Belgium, Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Sweden. Norway, Finland, and then Sculpture, Hans Bartlach, Lembrook, Colwyn, Architecture, for examples. And now Cubis. Okay. Cubis. The Cubis represents abstract reality, intellectual truth. They don't paint what they see, but what they know. Various angles of view. Objects reduced to geometry. As first appeared the hermetic Cubins and later it appeared the synthetic Cubins. Then came World War I. Painting. Pablo Picasso, he is the most important painter. The first painting that appears is Ciencia y Caridad, painted with 15 years old. The Blue Period uh, has paintings like Blue Bear, so it's examples. Then there is a Pink Period. Um, well. Next are Portrait of Gertrude Stein and Ladies on Avignon, one of the most famous artworks. This Ladies on Avignon, these more examples. Famous. Okay, this is Ladies of Avignon, this is from Blue Period, this is from Pink Period. He had a relationship with the photographer Dora Mar, paintings of women like Crying Woman, Dora Mar, Woman with Hat, and Woman at the Mirror. The Guernica is about the bombing of, of, his, of this Spanish city in the civil war by the Nazis and the fascists. And then some other paintings. Um, uh, now, um, just here examples of the crying woman and this Guernica. Juan Gris, follower of Picasso, George Braque, the main painter in France, and Fernand Leger, near Futurist movement. Here examples of everyone. Roger de la Fresnaye and Robert de Lunay from the Orphans movements going to abstraction. Now sculptures from Pablo Picasso, Alexandre Archipenko, Jacques Lipchis, and Pablo Gargallo. I hope these things are all fine. Here you see more examples of sculptures. Now for the rings. So I saw more pictures here. This is the blue period. Now the pink period. Ladies of Avignon. A woman crying and such, then Garnica. The mother of his artworks. Juan Gris. Braque. Leger. And just others. The Lone. Here, sculpture. Archipenko, Lipsit, and Gargallo. Futurist. 
It was founded by Filippo Tommaso Marinetti. It focuses in aspects of reality as movement, speed, and simultaneity of actions. It comes from Cubans. It has influence of technology, architecture, and um, and architecture is anti historicist. Here I will talk about all three things. Painting, Alberto Bozzioni, Giacomo Balda, and Luigi Russolo. This last one is also a musician, machinist, uh, musician, machinist, uses machine sound in music. You will see what I mean. Umberto Bozzioni, Giacomo Balda, and Luigi Russolo. Very beautiful, these paintings. Kino Severini, well, this is. Yes, this is still painting here, Severini and Carlo Carrà. Here examples of everything. Now a sculpture with Umberto Bozzioni and Giacomo Balda. Here are the examples. And then the architecture. So here I just made this by myself. It's a um, division in three styles. So it begins with the article considered at the beginning of futurist architecture because the skyscraper and lines, crystal building, just an example. Here, now, the Googie architecture after the World War II, the concept was reinvented, inspired in the space race. See the space need? Well, here are different examples. You can see here. And then neo-futurist architecture, of course. Um, remember the high-tech architecture, is all, it will also be included in this. But anyway, here neo futurist architecture um, still continues into high test, here you see. And so here are examples of everything. This and um, these three are my top favorites. This one looks like spaceship, uh, at least for me. Here are some others. Now this is abstraction. So I just saw my pictures here, Johnny, Giacomo Baglia, Ursolo, Severini, Carra, and then sculpture and architecture. Abstraction and neoplastic. Abstraction. The artist doesn't try to reflect reality but his inner world to express the feelings, only forms and colors without natural references. There are two tendencies. The first is the lyrical abstraction, influenced by phobies and expressionists, where color is more important. The second is geometrical abstraction, inspired by cubins. The last one is also called neoplasticines or the steel. Also mention the supermatins, the abstraction from Russian constructivists that will be explained later. Lyrical abstraction with Basilic and Disky, abstraction depicting feelings to make the spectator to have emotion, the inner spirit, mood states. Most of his artworks doesn't even have a uh, his artwork don't even have a name, uh, uh, don't even have a title because of this. Called being called impressions, improvisations or compositions. Robert Delaunay, he started with Cubins, but soon came to abstraction, investigating color and light. Here you see Vasily Kandinsky and Robert Delaunay. Neoplasticines, geometrical abstraction, the steel, Piet Mondrian, non-sentimental painting, independent of everything. He limited the vocabulary to rectilinear lines and the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, also using white, gray, and black, but pure colors, not mixes. Theo van Dusburg, he was related with the Bauhaus and this movement. And then Katrin Marlievich, from, from Supremateens or Russian Constructivists, he will be explained later. The example here is black square over white background. Piet Mondrian, Theo van Dusburg and Katrin Marlievich. Architecture, Gerrit Riedbel, he made the Riedbel Schroeder house with the use of rectilinear lines and the use of the three primary colors, plus white, black and grey. He also made the Riedbel chair. So here's the chair. And this is the Riedbel Schroeder house. Well, I also include this now. So the constructive beans, it began after the Russian Revolution and ended with the start of the URSS. The artists made revolutionary propagandistic artworks, but also abstract geometrical artworks. 
painting. It is the suprematinsk with the use of simple geometrical forms and the square and circle and white and black colors. Kazimir Male Malevich, founder of Suprematins. And uh, here are the different artworks. These are very funny artworks. It's like black square over white background. This is white square in white background, black circle in white background. It's like that. Lyubov Popova, Olga Rosanova, and Alexander Rotchenko. Rotchenko is a um, film director. But here you can see this is Kino Glad, one of the classics of Russian films. Sculpture with Anton Pesner and Non Gabo. And architecture, that is the true Russian constructive means, use of simple lines and industrial materials. With Vladimir Tatlin, he made sculptorical abstract pieces, and Vladimir Sukov, who made uh, the Sukov Tower. Here you see Tatlin Tower and Sukov Tower. Okay, I save and I show pictures. So, abstraction, lady construction with Kandinsky. Delaunay and then Neoplasticine with Mondrian, Van Doesburg, and then Casimir Malevich. This is the Neoplasticine architecture and the chair, and now the Russian constructive beans with Malevich, Popova, Rosanova, Rotsenko. This is the Potenkin, another film. Then sculpture and architecture. That link and Sukov. Okay, now Dada is. Still saving. It happened as a reaction to the disasters of war. There is no logic, no reason, reivindication of thought and randomness, and the absurd of existence. It is the anti-art, protest. They mostly do sculpt sculptures and photomontage. Martel Duchamp. He presented daily life objects as artworks. That is called ready-made. Here are examples, Marcel Ducan, and then there is also the Man Ray. This example of Man Ray. Kurt Sweeters, uh, Mersaule is a sculpture made with things of daily life, and it goes to be it got to be enormous. Hansen Art, Raoul Hausmann, who made college. Here you see Kurt Sweeters, Jan Hansen Art, and Raoul Hausmann. John Hartfield, he worked for Ace Magazine, he will appear also in photography, and made photomontages. Then Max Ernst, painter of Dalaïns and Surrealins, and Francis Picabia, he worked in near all the movements. John Hartfield, Max Ernst, and Francis Picabia. Surrealins. Uh, okay, I saw the Dalaïns here first, very quick. Duchamp. Man Rai, Sweeters, Jan Art, Hausmann, Ernst, Picabia, and now Surrealist. Surrealists, it evolved from Dadaists and had emphasis in imagination, fantasy, and the world of dreams with influence of psychoanalysis. The Surrealist Manifest was published by André Breton in Paris. Resources that the artists use are like animation of the inanimated, isolation of anatomic parts, nonsense elements, metamorphosis, fantastic machines, relations between naked and machines, chaos, automats, empathy, perspectives, hidden thoughts, the forbidden things, erotins, and sex are also influences. Figurative surrealism with Giorgio de Chirico, antecedent to surrealism, he founded the movement of Scuola Metaphysica. Paintings with architectonic elements, usually without humans, but using mannequins. Piazza d'Italia, Haunting Muses, Sector and Andromaca. Here you see examples. 
Salvador Dalí, he is characterized by his provocation and his paranoid critic method, influence from sex and paranoia, persistence of memory. Well, here are the different artworks. Here, this is a photograph, it's obviously not made, I think. And here are paintings. He made a lot of interesting paintings. Paul Del Box, he was expressionist at the beginning, but later he will evolve to classical surrealism. You see all the paintings have this kind of blue, nice environment, the blue tones in the colors. René Magritte. Symbolist surrealist, realist forms in nonsense places and moments. Mars Chagall and Mars, Max Ernst. Uh, he also did the series Natural History. Well, Mars Chagall and Mar Max Ernst. Also, I think uh, for this, maybe I should change the picture here so it doesn't show the same. Uh, so give me a moment, I'm going to change this quick. And that, that is this one. I just put this so it doesn't appear the same painting. Okay, I continue. So I'm here with my turns. Tisla Beksinski, Gothic surrealist, very curious and dark paintings. What did this happen? Um, here you see. And then Vladimir Kotz, just another one. Contemporary Russian surrealist painter. Very interesting. Uh, very interesting. That's all. This one. Abstract surrealist. Joan Miro. He made painting and sculpture. Um, just different. Here you see one of the paintings and one of the sculpture. Andre Masson, he analyzes the structure of the object to make it an intellectual thinking. Yves Stangui, he represents dreams, horizons with sensation or infinite, and the presence of mysterious objects with signals to theft. Andre Masson and Yves Stangui. Maurice Cornelis Etcher, impossible figures, improbable and state. Here you see another one. And now sculpture, Joan Miró already mentioned it, Alberto Giacometti, iron sculptures with tall red linear lines, Constantin Brancusi, real independent, he tries to go to the essence, simplifying the forms, and Julio González from the Between Wars period. Here you see examples of all of them. Okay, I save and I saw pictures here. Giorgio de Chirico. Salvador Dalí. Um, Dalí del Box. Madrid. Chagall. Ernst. 
vaccines be cause middle these are all the, the sculptures he made Mason Tangui Esther now the different sculptures Giacometti, Brancusi, Gonzalez and that's all Informal limits. It happened these years. It is based in the expressivity of the artist. It is an abstract art where the support and the painting themselves are the protagonists. It includes tachisme, drops and stains of painting, art brut, marginal art, and materic painting, use of other materials non related with painting. Finally, abstract expressionist or action painting is characterized by the dripping technique, and the artist usually participates in it with objects or his own body. George Mathieu, Hans Hartung, Jan Faudrier with Tachins, Adolf Volpi, Art Brut, Antonio Saura, Materic Painting, Anthony Tapies, Materic Painting, and Laurence Jiménez Balaguer, Materic Painting. Here you see examples of all of them. Joseph Beuys, Materic Painting and Performance, he did the Coyote Performance. Wolf Bostel, Materic Painting, The College, Jackson Pollock, Abstract Expressionist, and these, all of these are Arts and Expressionists. Jackson Pollock, Willem de Kooning, Mark Rothko, and Clifford, St Clifford Steele. Here you see examples of all of them. Sculpture, David Smith, Alexander Calder, Jorge Oteiza, and Eduardo Chillido. Neofiguration, uh, it is a reaction to informal limbs and recovers certain figuration of expressionist influence, but it is the form, with painters like Francis Bacon, Lucian Freud, and Bernard Buffett. Here you see the examples. This is from the Potemkin film. Lucian Freud, these paintings are very cool. Bernard Buffett. Uh, Nicolas de Style, Amsterdam landscape with a lot of painting and college with clothes. Cobra group, one painting of this. Well, I just. Composed by. Here use examples. And then sculpture of neofiguration. Henry Moore, Pablo Serrano Aguilar, and Luis Burgoyes with Maman. Maman is the big spider. You will see here this. Okay, I saw pictures before continuing. Informalis. Matthew, Hartung, Pautrier, Wolfi. Saura, Tapies, Jiménez Belaguer, Bewis, Postel, Pollock, Conin, Mark Rocco, Philly for Steel, then Sculpture, Smith, Calder, Oteiza, Tigida, and Neofiguration with Bacon, Freud, Buffet, The Style, The Cobra Group, Sculpture with More, Serrano Aguilar, and Burgoyes with Mama. Pop art. Uh, pop art comes from popular art and it is opposed to abstract expressionists. Figuration inspired in popular images, taking images from publicity, photography, comic, and mass media.
New Dada was the antecedent with Robert Rosenborg and Jasper Jones. Andy Warhol, professional illustrator and the head of pop art. He had contracts between artists and intellectuals, and also aristocrats. Hollywood celebrities, models, and picturesque people. Marilyn Monroe, Campbell, and Coca-Cola are some examples. Roy Lichtenstein, comic art. Tom Besselman, he has female news and images related with smoking. James Rosenkiss, his most famous work is F111. And others as president-elect. Eduardo Paolozzi, he also worked in sculpture. Here you see Roy Lichtenstein, Tom Wesselman, James Rosenkist, and Eduardo Paolozzi. Richard Hamilton, he made the college use quality this, well, this college where he took things from American magazines. Clay Oldenburg, a sculptor known by his artworks of common objects. And Jayoi Kusama, artist more ligated to performance, very extravagant, extravagant and colorist. Here, this is the collage taken from American magazines. And Clash Oldenburg, this uh, common objects made as very big sculptures. It's, the one is very cool. Here, another one, and this, another one. There is one with a, about an ice cream I will show later. And here, Jayoi Kusama. Okay, so. New Dada, Andy Warhol, Lichtenstein, Wesselman, Rosenkist, Paolozzi, Hamilton, Oldenburg, this is the ice cream one, this hamburger and the cakes. Yayoi Kusama. Now, next one. Neorealins. It happened in France and it is inspired in reality and consumist of, in, of industrial society, but extracting the worst aspect, the residual materials. Yves Klein, known by his immaterial art as the sculptor aerostatic with blue balloons, Armand Fernandez Armand, know by his accumulations of things as an ordered fool reflecting the consumist society, and Jean Tingeli, known by his sculptoric machines. You explain Armand Fernandez Armand and Jean Tingeli. Daniel Spoerri, known by his near pictures, a group of kitchen objects in a table. Cesar Baldacini Cesareo, known by his compression and representations of animals. Nikki de Saint Fale, known by his sculpture called Nana's Fat Woman with Colors. And Piero Manzoni, known by his Merda Artista and also Breath of Artista, Achrom and E. Piero Manzoni is the most funny. Here you see examples of all of them, and this is Piero Manzoni. Minimalist, uh, it evolved from neo abstraction and post pictorial abstraction. This kind of painting doesn't contain any message, it only exists. Grid canvas using only color divided into tendencies, color field, and hard aids. Abstract and simple artworks reduced to the minimum, that's why they are called minimal arts. With artists like Frank Stella, Barnett Newman, Ellsworth Kelly, Robert Mangold, Robert Riemann, Robert Morris. Kenneth Nolan, Morris Lewis, and Helen Frankenthaler. Robert Roberts here. Here you see examples of all of them. Okay, I saw pictures now before continuing. New Orleans with Klein, Arman, Ingeli. Spoerri, Cesareo, De Saint Fale, and Mantoni. Minimalist, Stella, Newman, Kelly, Mangold, Riemann, Morris, Noland, Morris Lewis, 
Am Funken Thale. Ok, next one. Hyperrealins. It has an adverse reaction against minimalins. It is characterized by an exaggerative vision of reality with an, al with an aspect almost photographic. This is really impressive. Painting. Dennis Pedersen, father of hyperrealins. He painted homeless persons, took clothes, he painted portraits, and Richard Stess. He painted city landscapes with reflections in crystal. Especially with Richard Estes is super cool. Here you see, these are paintings, remember that. This one is amazing. Antonio López García, he painted the city of Madrid. Magda Torres Curta, Mauro David, and Alisa Monks. She painted impressive women in sober. Antonio López García, Magda Torres Curta. Mauro David and Alisa Mons. Sculpture with John de Andrea. His sculptures of women are of extreme realism. Duan Hanson, he sculpted normal people. And Ron Muek, he sculpted intimate parts of the human body and at a huge scale. The last two photos are from his father, um, from his artwork, Dead Dad. Dead dad about the corpse of his father and the artist used his own hair for it. John de Andrea, Duan Jans, you see this? It looks like people, but they are sculptures. And Ron Muek. Okay, now postmodernist, I said here again. Hyperrealins, so Peterson, Close. You see this, it looks like photograph, but they are paintings. Stes, Antonio Lopez, Magda Torres, David, Monks. De Andrea, you see this also, it's a sculpture. Hands on this one. Again, all of these are sculptures. Muek. Postmodernist. In fact, many artists are still alive. There are various movements and there is discussion if we are centrally in a postmodern period. Trans avant-garde, the Italian movement that theorizes the coming back to colors after the domination of conceptual art, with artists like Sandro Cia, Enzo Cucci, Francesco Clemente, Nicola da Maria, and Mimo Palladino. Here you see examples of everyone. Neo-expressionists, Hermann movement inspired in expressionism, with George Baselitz, George Himmendorf, and Fred Spriedi. Prefiguration or figura, figura, figuration libre, French movement, figurative painting, spontaneous and primitive, influences from comic, mass media, publicity and, photo, and cinematography, with Jean Michel Alberola. Neomanerins, also known as anachronistic, they are a group of Roman painters inspired in models of the past from Italian Renaissance to Baroque, with artists like Carlo, Carlos Romano Silveira, Antonio Gadea, Guillermo Perez Villalta, and Chema Cobo. Here you see examples. This is very cool. I really like this painting, especially this one. And this one is also very interesting. If you see, it doesn't have any face. It's like a person with a face checking a book of ancient paintings. Simulationist, it is like neo-expressionist, but in the United States. And the contextualization of the image reduces to the abstract artists that like David Salem. But paintings, it takes elements of the street as graffiti and posters inspired in marginal ideologies and voluntarily dirty. Artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat and Eric Fitz.
Neopop, it goes further than pop art by using new materials and combining images of different art periods, also assuming the iconography of comic and cartoons. Artists like Case Harding, Jeff Koons, and Romero Brito. This Romero Brito is very interesting now, so it's very beautiful, very cute. Super flat, influenced by manga and anime, Japanese style, and otaku subculture, with artists like Takashi Murakami, Itoshi Tomitawa, Yoshitomo Nara, Yoshihiro Tatsumi, Frederick Boilet, and Hiro Taniguchi. Takashi Murakami. This is very cool. Here, Itoshi Tomitawa, Yoshitomo Nara, Yoshihiro Tatsumi. Kinetic art, well, um, I save and so the postmodernist first. Trans avant garde. New Paladino. Neo expressionist. Free figuration, neo -manierings. This one is also very cool. Obviously, you know the reference of this to Marcel Ducan. Very cool. This one, I just love this one. This is from a Spanish painting, uh, Spanish, Spanish painter. Here you see the clock and this, the light thing. And I think you can imagine what is this. A new image, simulation is bad painting. Neo pop. Super flat. Okay, now next. Kinetic art, sculptoric arts based on movements with artists like Alexander Calder, Jesus Rafael Soto, Liman Whitaker, David Ascalon. Here are examples of everything. Here are more, Bouquet Fountain in Wellington, Angela Corner, Turpin and Crawford Studio, Nicholas Schaeffer, Mark van der Broek, Uli Asenborg, and Theo Janssen. Here you see example. This one is very cool. Later I can put a video of this. It's very cool because the sculpture really, really moves. Actually, I want to, put, to do it now. I saw optical and I saw video of that. Optical art, pictoric art based in optical illusions with Victor Vasarelli, Jacob Agam, Benji and Sai, Bricket Riley, and then just random examples. Here you see. Then this is illustration. Yeah, uh, cinetic art. An optical art. Okay, I saw the Theo Janssen. It's very cool. Restre, un esquimal o algo así. A lo largo de los años. Si no hay viento, Yo sale sí. aire comprimido de botellas de plástico. Malo para no caer, más inteligente. Copiar la forma.
of the beast. Pero Can al you igual que en la naturaleza, Very cool. aquí solo sobreviven los más fuertes. Teo Jansen ha construido varias generaciones de bestias de la playa en las últimas décadas con el objetivo de que puedan sobrevivir sin él. Y la historia de esta creación aún They no ha terminado. Es muy poco tiempo para una evolución, ¿no? Pero tengo que darme prisa. No tengo millones de años, tal vez solo unos 20. Tiene que haber al menos otras 40 generaciones de bestias de la playa. Las bestias pueden verse por todo el mundo, en playas y exposiciones. Theo Janssen espera que otras personas compartan su entusiasmo y sigan desarrollando sus construcciones. Sobrevivirán y espero que inspiren a gente más joven. Illustration, independent artist that, uh, that create Victoric artwork. This is just a personal compilation since there are thousands of artists, just personal. Artists I include here are Alan Lee, John Howen, Aaron Stokes, Victoria Frances, Vincent Locke, Alexander Nikonov, Benjamin Lacombe, Greddy Minas, Frank Kevicius, Ludovic Lauret, Makoto Sinkai, Sichigoro Singo, and Bank Lin Vlog. Alan Lee and John Howe are well known because the Lord of the Rings illustrations and stock. Sorry, from the Vincent Locke, this one does the arts of the Carnival Course music albums. Alexander Nikonov, Benjamin Lacombe, Gediminas Prankevicius, Ludovic Lauretz, Makoto Sinkai, Sichigoro Singo, One Link Lot. Okay, I saw more here. Alan Lee, John Howell, Anne Stokes, Victoria Frances, Vincent Locke, Alexander Nikonov, Benjamin Lacombe, Gediminas Plankevicius, Ludovic Lauret, Makoto Sinkai. I think this one, Makoto Sinkai is the one of the Studio Ghibli. Ichigoro Cinco and One Link Plot. Last tendency, this is the last part. Uh, 21st century. After the end of history of styles and conceptual art, we enter in a new time. This is the art from the 80s to today. Globalization. Conceptual art. This is older than the last tendencies, but still survives. As examples, Argos by Duchamp, Anthony, and Kosuth. Here you have Kosuth. Uh, young British artist. This is a group from England, and the most famous is Damien Hears with his animals and his diamond school. Ephemeral art, this is an artistic expression that disappeared. This is an uh, all kind, let me write this better, all kind of artistic expression that disappears. Among them, it is the ephemeral architecture, nomad obsolescence, and emergency. In examples, I, in, in examples, the Church of Stagatori and the Ice Hotel of Sweden. Among the manifestation of ephemeral art, we can find gardens, example, Versailles and Ken Roquen, water, examples, fountain of millennium in Argentina, magic fountains on Montjuic in Barcelona, pyrotechnics, aerostation, blue balloons by Yves Klein, Hair dressing, makeup, tattoo, piercing, fashion, perfumery, gastronomy, public art, and performance. Just out of things. Uh, here as photo, I just put this to illustrate, but you can imagine all the things. Land art, art that uses nature as support. It is also ephemeral. As examples, it is the image of human 
doing a spiral, the Getty Spiral by Robbie Sperson, Majority by Milton the Third, and what just different artworks. Here you see. Installation art. This is the this is as the name says, rooms with objects as art. Artists use the space of the exposition and the spectator can walk through the artwork. Here are just different examples. This one is very cool. Public art, this is the art in public spaces. Just that, art in public spaces. Here you see, the most cool is this one, the, art, the sculptures in the street. Performance, this is an scenic representation, usually with improvisation, where provocation and antonismant are very important. Happening is provocation, participation, improvisation. Ralph Ortiz and Paul Pierrot destroying a piano, uh, well, Marina Abramovic, Deborah de Roberti. Here you see just different artists. Marina Abramovic, this performance was something like she stays um, and she doesn't move and she let people to do things to her. And it was something like uh, this proves that humans can be violent because some people did some violence and damage to her. There were the Robertis, this painting by Courbet, uh, Alejandra Sever, Spencer Tunic and performance in Mexico. Feminist art based in feminist movement as reivindication for the woman to gain the rights and exploring feminine things as maternity. Just different artists. I like this, I think it's interesting. And it's the end. This is just the summary, just checking everything is well formatted. Love so many artworks. Okay, so it's finished. I saw more pictures here. Conceptual art, young British artist, ephemeral art. Gardens, fountains, land art. Installation art. Public art. Performance and happening. Feminist art. And that's all. So now I have to talk about video too. Um, so give me a moment. As I say before starting, literature for this episode is going to be the modern literature from the 20th century. Contemporary literature, I won't talk it now because I still have to read some books about it. It will be done in the final episode of the art streams so just reminding only two more episodes remain and then i finish all the art stream the next one will be photography and cinematography i will talk about both things in one stream and the last one i will talk about music 
literature obviously not talking on i will do like a kind of summary of other literature and then at the end is when i will talk about contemporary literature and then there are others like hmm, scientific art and i think there was something else like decorative arts just very small things so i will do everything in one stream anyway focusing now in what remains for today's stream is literature I just want to mention first, uh, and before starting, because checking um, other books, I just came uh, by things that I should have talked in romantic scenes. Like, for example, uh, there is Peter Pan. I just go very quick in this. I think you know what it is the um, boy who didn't grow, and then this uh, magical country. And the fire is so I'm going to play. All it takes is faith and trust. I read Just the book and honestly in the book uh, they are kind of aggressive. Like uh, they arrive to the magical country and then Peter Pan and the kids in living in that place are like a uh, we kill pirates and then these kids that come from the normal ways like for them it's normal like uh, they are meeting kids that kill pirates, and this is normal, so I don't know. Here we go. They are kind of aggressive. I think the movie is very nice at pace of the book. And the mermaids also appear, the part where Peter Pan loses the saddle in the house also appear. The story of Hook, also the crocodile, the tic tac of the crocodile, all of that appears. I think it's very nice adaptation. And then another one that this the book I like it much is Pinocchio. Uh, well, yes, this one, but. Oh, this is something new. Interesting. Well, I want to check the cartoon one. This one. This is a wow. uh, cartoon. Oh, this one. So things about this movie and the book. That I think the movie is also a good adaptation. Although I think in I remember the movie Pinocchio is not so. Um, not evil, but um, like not a good boy. Like he study, he should behave well. Like the book, he he, became, he behaves worse than in this film, I think. But yes, many things that happen in this film happen also in the book, obviously. And the book is very well written and very. It's a light read. The uh, that's I don't know the English word for that. That book also like the, this book also appears in the film. The fairy also appears. The uh, the whale in the book is like a um, dragon monster. The it getting the ears of the. I don't know English word of this animal. Uh, let me see. Like this, this. This is also happens in the book. But I think this, uh, this character, this is also. Uh, Pinocchio goes to um, like a place with different toys like him and then all of them can move by themselves so I think this also Don't appears in the movie. So I think yes, it's very nice adaptation. Also very interesting. Whoa, <laughs> the year. Amazing. Time passes so quick. And then the last one I want to mention is Davy Jones. This is there is no literature about Davy Jones. It's uh, this character. Mm. 
I want to put something. So, uh, the way they portray it in Pirates of the Caribbean is. I, I don't know how to explain this because there is no literature and David Young is like a kind of pirate legend. Uh, it's inspired in a pirate captain or something like that. Uh, the story in Pirates of the Caribbean is very nice adaptation. It's like there is a love story between David Jones and Calypso. And Calypso does treason to him and then he gets evil and puts his heart in a locker. And then when the uh, pirates say uh, the locker of David Jones, they mean the depths of the ocean. So I think it's cool. And then, well, about the flying dots, it's kind of a different story. It's about a, a ship that is condemned to sail in the sea air always, and it cannot reach uh, a harbor. So it in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, it mixes because David John can only go to the land one time every 10 years. So. I think the Pirates of the Caribbean did a very good job about David Jones. Okay, I want to do the... Uh, the Lords of Copyright, please remember I'm telling mythology, so... Please. Men still alive, the rest have moved on. So it, he appears also like Cthulhu, if you remember from Lovecraft. Do you feel death? Do you feel that dark abyss? All your deeds laid bare. All your sins punished. <laughs> I can offer you an escape pod. Don't listen to him! Do you not fear death? I'll take my chances, sir. To the depths. <laughs> Life is cruel. Why should the afterlife be any different? I offer you a choice. Join my crew and postpone the judgment. One hundred years before the mast. Will ye serve? I will serve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is enough. You are neither dead nor dying. <laughs> well, I think it's enough about David Jones. Please, Lords of Copyright, don't think I'm. Uh, infringing copyright. I'm explaining mythology, so just saying. Okay, now I saw books about this. Then, first one Fifth Malion by Bernard Tau. I don't, I still don't understand why this book is called Fifth Malion because Fifth Malion is from Greek mythology, it's a sculptor who creates a woman sculpture and then he falls in love with the sculpture and then the sculpture becomes alive and it's a woman but this book is nothing about that so i don't know it's a teacher of phonetics called henry higgins who makes a bet to make that um a florist woman that talks very bad that is called elisa dolittle and um, talks very good so it's like this teacher is going to teach um a person to talk properly like talk like a like a queen he wins but he and elisa um fight have an argument 
and the relation ends here. He, uh, and just my perception, re reading these books, th this book, uh, for me, he is very annoying. Uh, so, well, this book, um, I would recommend if you are curious about the uh, phonetics. I think for me, uh, what I most enjoy about this book is the beginning. Just that. Uh, another is Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman. Uh, this is a poet. Um, he made a compilation of poetry that is called Leaves of Grass. Um, he talks about the material body as the best thing and such. And you might know him because the poem Oh Captain My Captain and this Oh Captain My Captain and it's a very famous poem well next one I'm going to put YouTube again next one is Lewis Carroll with Alice in Wonderland cartoon side this Alice. The book is very nice. Like the book and the adaptation are very well. The adaptation of the film is very well done regarding the book. And the book is also very entertaining. There is a second part that is called Alice Through the Mirror. And for me, this one wasn't as interesting as the previous one. But also curious if you like it. So I just say the plot of both and then I put the trailer. Alice is a kid. Honestly, a bit annoying when reading the book. For me, it's a bit annoying. Anyway, this is subjective. She goes to the Wonderland through a, through a well because she follows a rabbit who is late somewhere. Um, then there is this, this chapters about she eats some food and then she grows or she gets smaller. There is a... Um, Mm, annoying book. I don't know how to say in English, but maybe it will appear in the trailer. Then there is the Hatman, the crazy Hatman. I don't know how to say well. And this eternal tea because it's like there is it is always the time of the tea, so they are celebrating the tea always. Then there is the Heart Queen and the cards, the soldier cards who want to. And the queen want to cut the head of the soldier cars, and at the end everything is a dream. And then Alice through the mirror. Um, so as the title says, Alice goes and enters a mirror, and then she enters a kind of parallel world where the chess pieces are alive. Then there are some characters like Trilogy Doom and Trilogy and Humpty Dumpty that are weird characters, like they have like egg safe and the conversation with Humpty Dumpty for me was the best in this book at the end Alice who is um at like a chess piece she became a queen and then she's like um doing like this with the uh red queen I don't know how to say in English like holding the piece and then the piece becomes cat and this is how he goes back to reality well here I put the trailer, I put it in. Alice in Wonderland. Step into an exciting, colorful, wonderfully new world as Walt Disney brings to glowing life the adventures the of Alice in Wonderland well. based on Lewis Carroll's beloved story. There are wonderful tunes for your heart, wonderful thrills for your eyes as you share with Alice the wonderful things she sees, the wonderful friends she meets. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Oh, and also the... The Mad Hatter. The the chessier's um cat i think i should have put the piece here um the cat that can disappear and this goes very quick but in this film they mix up things from both books so here for example like this this how the the man was saying pretty done and pretty D. Disappear in the Alice to the Mirror, not in the first book. The wall isn't covered. Uh, maybe this is the Humpty Dumpty. The Mad Hatter. The Marcher. This is the Hatter. The the... And many more. Okay, I'm going to <laughs> the adventures of Alice. use this at normal speed. Please, Lords of Copyright, forbid... mm, forgive me. Alice in Wonderland, based on Lewis Carroll's beloved story. 
There are wonderful tunes for your heart. Wonderful thrills for your eyes as you share with Alice the wonderful things she sees. The wonderful friends she meets. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. The walrus and the carpenter. The Mad Hatter. The March Hare. The Cheshire Cat. The White Rabbit. And many more. I'm late. I'm late. It's a very important date. No time to say hello. Goodbye. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I give myself very good advice. But I very seldom follow it. A very merry birthday. To me? To you. A very merry birthday. To me? For you. Little bear, the butterfly, kiss the tulips. Then the sun is like a toy balloon. There are gifts up in the morning glory. It's in the morning afternoon. Oh, no. This is the annoying boss. As in the book, I think it's female. Or in the film, it's male. Anyway, so this is Alice in Wonderland. Another one The Portrait of Dorian Gray. I really enjoyed this book, I must say. Dorian Gray is a beautiful man um, whose friend, that is the painter Basil Hallward, paints a portrait for him. Well, he paints many portraits of him. And then this painter has a friend that is called Lord Henry Walton. And they are, they three meet. And then Lord Henry Walton says uh, Dorian Gray that he should take advantage of his job. Like, uh, he will he won't be young forever, so he should uh, enjoy the time where he is young. And then uh, he gets sad about it. He sees his portrait, and then uh, he's like, "I wish I don't get old, and the portrait can get old for me." And then this happens in reality. Uh, so every time that Dorian Gray does something evil, there is something in the portrait that changes, and with the passing of the years, the portrait also gets old. So it's like. The portrait gets old and then he gets um, evil. Like, there is a love story between Dorian and an actress called Sybil Bain, and there is a moment that they have uh, an argument, and Dorian wants to break with her, and he's cruel with her. And then, he, he, when he goes again to the portrait, he can notice that the portrait has a cruel smile. And then he notices, well, the civil kills himself, he suicides, and Dorian doesn't really feel that bad. First, he feels bad, but later he doesn't care that much. He hides the portrait in a room. He gets crazy uh, with the passing of the years about the portrait changing all the time. He doesn't want to see it, but then he sees, and then he gets more crazy. And, and at the end, mm, he kills the painter friend, he kills Basile. Uh, he destroys the body with the help of a scientific. Um, then at the end, Dorian Gray tries to destroy the portrait, like he uh, tries to destroy it with a knife. But then the next scene is a man with a knife uh, in the body, an old man, and then the portrait is young. The man in the portrait is young again, and the portrait is perfectly. So it's like he tries to kill the portrait, but with this, he killed himself. I think it's very nice book. I really enjoy it. I don't know if there is a trailer of something. I didn't have to time to check movies for this. So, uh, Portrait of Dorian Gray. Maybe there is. Uh, I think there are films. So, for example, this. Let's see. Lords of Copyright, I remember you. This is a trailer, and I'm talking about literature, so please. If I say this, I would lose of copyright because when I publish this to YouTube, then I will start getting the copyright infringement, whatever, and it's very tired. I've done dreadful things, monstrous things, and they will be pressed. Do you remember when I first came to London? I can do things better. Looks and youth. Well, it's yours. 
Like so. And then we'll be a price. It doesn't explain mods. I think this picture explains mods. Very nice book. I really recommend it. Next one. The Vengeance of Don Mendo or in Spanish, the La Venganza de Don Mendo. Venganza de Don Mendo. This is a very cool, I, I love it, I just love it. The way it is written, and also I have watched it in theater, not in person, but as film, and it's, it's wonderful. The acting was wonderful. I just love it. It's, it's a love, love and treason story based in like Middle Ages. Uh, there is the... Don Mendo, who is the lover of Magdalena, but he's uh, a treacherous. Um, he's going to be killed, but he escapes and he uh, gets um, a costume of Renato. So it's like he uh, has a yellow hair and such. And then he um, is a very beautiful um, musician, like you can see here. And at the end, he gets the vengeance. Uh, this looks very nice. Like this is a different actor. I want to put uh, a fragment so you can see. It's in Spanish, obviously, but uh, at least you can see a bit of the acting. This is the movie I have watched, and I have watched it a few times, and it's just wonderful. I don't get tired of this. <laughs> La palabra que di, sujetadle, atar, pollones, que solo así un caballero puede entregar el acero que combatió en cien acciones. ¡A esa! Vive Dios que tal pujanza ni tal orgullo comprendo. Venganza, cielos, venganza. Juro y al jurar te ofrendo que los siglos en su atruendo habrán de mí una enseñanza, pues dejará perduranza la venganza. De Don Mendo. No, he's... De Don Mendo. Y al rayo de estrella. Y a mi prisión se enjoya de luz bella. Y a... Ya soy dueño de mí. Ya bien me hallo. Ya trina el ruiseñor. Ya canta el gallo. Trece de mayo ya. ¿Quién lo diría? De Don Mendo no podré. ¿Cómo podré matarla si aún la amo? ¿Acaso por salvarse aquella noche hace poca masa? Es el vil carcelero. ¡Pajo! ¡Pasa! Con de los nuños escuderos. Vamos, por ejemplo, Marqués de Moncada, a hallar las razones que aquí os han traído. No sois por ventura mi buen camarada. Camarada vuestro quien ha delinquido. Perpetrando un robo me vi sorprendido. Así plugo al cielo, alado o alada. Y no creo, moncada, que ganéis vos nada, siendo camarada de quien a su espada ha infido, escupido, torcido y rompido. <risa> Mentís. ¿Qué decís? Mentís. Y vos de vos os reís, como yo me río de vos. No comprendo qué decís. Será porque no queréis. Que está claro, mire Dios. Siempre fuisteis enigmático y epigramático y ático y gramático y simbólico. Y aunque os escucho flemático, sabed que a mí lo hiperbólico no me resulta simpático. Habladme claro, Marqués, que en esta cárcel sombría cualquier claridad de día, consuelo y alivio es. Claro he de hablar, hace día. Si vos fuereis un ladrón o por ladrón, yo os... He leaves the prison, then he's um, he's uh, disguised with this costume. 
Temple bizarro, corazón de cimitarra, flor la más bella del darro y orgullo de la aljujarra. Mora en otro tiempo atlética y hoy enfermiza y escuálida a quien la pasión frenética trocó de hermosa crisálida en mariposa sintética. Mora digna de mi amor, pero a quien no puedo amar, porque un hábito traidor heló en mi pecho la flor aún antes de perfumar. Deja de estar en institutivos de venablos. Retorne tranquilo. Pasada. Más que es esto, es ilusión la reina que es situación. Pueblos. Mátalo, moncada. Clava en mis carnes tu acero. Sacia tu venganza en mí. Si no has de quererme ya, y eres mendo, por alá. ¿Qué por alá? Por aquí. ¡Ah! <risa> Otra muerte, cielo santo. La razón perdido a. ¡Qué espanto, Marqués! ¡Qué espanto! ¡Ah! ¡Aquí me dio eso! Bueno. Yo quería decir eso porque yo amo este tío. Creo que es mi favorito de todos. I continue. Um, another is the convert um, el nombre de la rosa the the name of the rose of the rose by Umberto Eco. So this is like a mystery um, story based in Middle Ages. Uh, by the way, I hope. Yes, I put trailer. Within these walls, men come to seek God. He has come to seek a killer. We found the body here, already mutilated. And today we know which was, which was found blood. Somebody took him. A man of reason in a world of blind faith. Yes, more blood here. You mean that he committed suicide? No one And a crime that could not be suppressed. In states, he did not write with his tongue. Because... I don't like this place. I, I don't want to say that if you like uh, mystery books, like... Mm, Police and crime book, you will like this book. But uh, the language is like Middle Ages. Like the author did a lot of research about Middle Ages, and uh, you can feel that really the the environment is very well written. Like the because they are monks, so they are all the time referring to the Bible or to God or saying sentences in Latin. And uh, so I think you will enjoy this book if you like this kind of topic. No, I am most curious to see the library for myself. May I do so? No, but probably should have done it on the code. We're from the Lemon Hey, who's there? You overestimate his talents. That's why I cut you. Did not commit suicide. When he is challenged by a man of cruelty and power, the hunter becomes the hunted. Frederick, you please! The matter has occurred to the utmost clarity. Had someone else not chosen to look in the wrong direction, several men of God might still be with us. Our monks will be cut that's here, and they also will have pocket fingers and pocket thumb. This man is back, just as Frederick William foretold. Yes, it was right. Thank you. Just as I too have no right in the murderer, he will not agree. Lock him up! One final murder has been planned. Asta! Asta! How'd we get out? What's up, difficulty? And it's his. Sean Connery. F. Murray Abraham. The name of the rose. A story of unholy murder. Okay. So now, what is missing is the Spanish authors and the Latin American authors. Let's see what I say. <clears throat> First, it is the uh, 98th generation. 98th generation. I write it here. Oh, I don't know if. Well, okay, yes. Uh, so, what this author? These are Ruben Darío. This one. So, he writes uh, poems. Um, he ha um, his poems are. Um, I think he could explain. Uh, his vocabulary is very nice because he um, has vocabulary about flowers, hems, uh, luxury materials, animal, music, cool things, rhetoric figures. It's a like a very beautiful and decorated poetry. It's not a typical poetry like love or whatever, but he used uh, all these words um, to make the poetry to be more beautiful. And one of the most famous painting is the 
princess of the um, strawberry mouth. In Spanish, it would be the princesa de boca de fresa. I don't know if I can get something like that. What? Uh, the princess is sad. Uh, the princess is sad. What will the princess have? The uh, the breast gave her mouth of strawberry. Well, I, it's a bit weird to say it in English, but it's one of his most famous poems. Like I know this poem since high school. Another is uh, by Jane Clan. He wrote theater that is compilated as the Barbaric Comedies or Comedias Barbaras. It is a trilogy of theater um, pieces. Uh, it's um, like kind of daily life and stuff. I didn't feel much interested in it, honestly. Uh, another one is Io Baroja. He writes a um, semi autobiographic and philosophical book that is called Arbol de la Ciencia or Tree of Science. Another one is Antonio Machado. He writes po poems of different topics. Um, especially, I I liked about the I don't know how to say in, in English honestly. Well, most favorite one is uh, the Wanderer. There is no way. I don't know how to say it in, in English. Caminante no hay camino. It's Wanderer. There is no way. Wanderer, they are your steps, the way, and nothing more. Um, wanderer, there is no way. The way is made when you walk. When you walk, the way is made. And when you turn your view behind, you can see the way that never you must go again. Wanderer, there is no way, but stairs in the sea. A bit weird translation, but I like that poem. And then another artist, uh, another art writer is uh, Miguel de Unamuno. He writes um, a book that is called Niebla, that is, uh, in English it will be Fog. This is the story of Augusto Pérez, a, fi a fictional character that the most funny is the end. Overall, the book is telling the life of this character that is also based in the life of the author a bit or something like that. For me, the best is the end. In the end, uh, Augusto Bert, that is a fictional character, he goes to face Miguel de Unamuno, that is the writer. Um, it's like uh, Miguel says him that he's a fictional character and he can do whatever he wants with him. And then the character is like, uh, what are you saying? You're saying nonsense. This cannot be real. And then they argue in there and at the end, Miguel de Unamuno decides to kill the character and obviously at the end the character dies and it's funny, it's funny. If you can find an English translation of this, uh, I recommend it. Especially, as I say, the, the end. And he also has another book that is called The Sentimiento Trágico de la Vida, that in English it would be of the tragic feeling of life. Um, that is a philosophical book, basically. Then, um, other generation is the 27th generation. The 19th generation is from uh, 1898, and this one is 1927. So this one is later. Uh, and in this generation, there are Miguel Hernández, Federico García Lorca, and Pedro Salinas. So then, uh, Miguel Hernández is a poet. He does poems about war, basically, because this is the time of the Spanish Civil War, so he does a lot of poems about it. Then there is Federico García Lorca. And this poet uh, had problems in the war, like Federico García Lorca was killed in the war. Like, um, 
I don't know how to say in English and I'm going to transfer it. Like, so he was sued, okay. He was sued, but not because he participated in the war. He was like condemned to death and then they killed him by, like that. If you remember the Alexander of Fusilamientos, the Goya. Uh, so he was sued, something like this. So this is a poet and he also made a uh, theater. He made poems for kids about life, about death, different topics. And then he has a theater that is very famous in Spain. That is called La Casa de Bernarda Alba or The House of Bernarda Alba. Bernarda Alba is a woman who is a widow at 60 years and she decides to live the next eight years in mourning. Her, uh, she and her daughters also. Her daughter, but mm, and then the daughters don't want to be uh, enclosed in the house and not be able to go out because the morning. So and then one of the daughters, the older one, that is called Angustias, she is going to have a um, um, husband that is called Pepe el Romano. But uh, the younger uh, sister that is called Adela, she meets with Pepe el Romano in secret. At the end, this uh, relation is discovered. Bernarda tries to kill Pepe Romano, but she uh, don't. Uh, she fails the suit, but she says to Adela that she kills him, and then Adela uh, locks herself and suicides. This is the end. And then another author is Pedro Salinas, who also does poems. And this one does love poems. Okay, and then the last um, generation of art, well, not generation, but this is the Latin American boom, boom Latino Americano. It's a series of authors from Latin America who create um, books based in Latin America. And also, uh, they are uh, in this movement is also called the magical realism. And this means that the things that happen there, the stories are like daily life stuff. But in the story happen some things that are not normal, but the character just don't react to this as, as if they are not normal for them they are normal so this is called it is called magic magical realism because it's realist and the magical things that happen in the world the character act as if they are normal for example this is the difference of in fantasy also you think for example in a fantasy book there is a character who discovers a unicorn and then the character is like what is this creature this is a unicorn this is something magical and it surprise because it but then in magical realms if the character finds an unicorn it will be just as if the character finds a horse it's just a ah, unicorn or the uh, the man mounts in the unicorn and went to take a walk and it is said as if it is something normal so this is the difference so then the authors are gabriel garcia marquez He writes uh, 100 Years of Solitude, Love in the Times of Cholera, and Chronic of an Unannunciated Death. I don't know how to translate that. Um, chronic of Announced Death. Chronicles of an Announced Death. Oh, chronic of the Death for it all. Whatever. So, 100 Years of Solitude tells the story of the family Buendia through seven generations in the town of Macondo. Personally, uh, even if most people say this book is wonderful and such, that I also think it's wonderful, it's very well, very well written. But the story is basically the daily life of these characters. What I most love about this book is the title, the idea, the general idea that I explained with the end, because what I most love is the end. In the end, it says, because, because all the, okay, I don't know how to translate these words. Okay. 
um, it's like because all the lineages, oh, one moment, because all the lineages condemned to 100 years of solitude don't have a second opportunity over Earth. And at the end, the tomb of Macondo is destroyed. So it's like all the people in this generation of the Buendia family, all of them, for some reason, get to be alone all the life. <clears throat> so this is the uh, main idea of this book is the loneliness or solitude of all the members of this family over all the generations. It's like, I really like the concept. It's just the book is telling the stories of this character. And personally, I didn't feel much interest about it, but I really like the mm, idea of this book. Another book is The Love in the Times of Cholera. This book, I love it. I read it when I was in high school and I have very good memories of it. So it's about Florentino Ariza who waits more than 50 years, 50, five, zero, five, 50 years to have a relationship of love with a woman called Fermina Daza. This is a book about love, adventures, time, getting old and death. I, I love this book and I didn't read it again now because no time, but wonderful. And the other one, The Chronicle of a uh, Forest Old Death, uh, it's about, it's written as a periodistic or police book um, about there is a man who is going to marry a woman, but they discover that this woman is not virgin. And then the woman says, I'm not virgin because this other guy. And then the brothers of this woman go to kill this guy. And they say it everywhere, except and uh, everyone knows about it, except the guy they're going to kill. And at the end, they kill it. And so the story is told as uh, what happened and how they killed the, uh, the person. So it's like told after the crime has been done. Like the book doesn't tell the story of the crime, but it's like a character who is writing the story of the crime after the crime has already happened. Another author is Jorge Luis Borges. Uh, basically, his texts are about uh, his story, uh, uh, about history, and antiquity, and mythology of different topics. It's the typical, uh, sorry to say like this, but it's the typical author who uses history and mythology um, to write like to write good literature because it's good literature, but it's just this topic that is repeated a lot in in history. <clears throat> Another one is Julio Cortázar, who writes uh, his masterpiece, let's say like that, is Rayuela. Rayuela is a um, game, let me, Rayuela is this game. <clears throat> and it's up because the book, the structure of the book is, is very weird. Uh, it's like, you can read the book as normal, like starting chapter one, chapter two, chapter three and such. But there is another way to read the book that is uh, jumping from chapter to chapter. And yes, there are instructions in the book about it. So it's it's very interesting the way this book is organized. Because there is not only one read, it can be different reads. Uh, so this book is about the story of Horacio Oliveira and his relationship with a woman called Lucia that Overall, the book is called as La Maga, that in English it will be like the wizard or the witch. Uh, and so it's like they have a kind of relationship, but it breaks for some reason. Uh, Lucia disappears. Well, honestly, I like more, this, I say the same as 100 Years of Solitude. I like the concept, I like how the book is done, but the story of the characters, I don't really feel much interested. <clears throat> And um, other than that, he also has some tales, like short tales. And I had, um, I felt especially attracted, I like it. One that is called, well, the book of um, tales is called Someone Who Walks Around There. In Spanish, it will be Alguien Que Anda Por Ahí. It's different independent tales. And there is one that is called Vientos Alicios. I don't know how to translate this in English. Vientos Alicios. Trade wins, I don't know. Um, but 
this one is about uh, partners, a man and a woman who are partners, and just for having a different experience, they made a travel to the same place but separately. Like they take separate planes, they meet separate people, they do separate uh, things separately, and then for returning to the co to, the, to their country, they return in the same plane, and then they tell the experience of what it is traveling alone and such. Another author is Cesar Vallejo. He has poems about death. Uh, specifically, especially famous is the Black Heralds or the Heraldos Negros. His poems are about pain, death, and he also has poems related to Spain, I think, related to the Spanish Civil War. Another poet is Pablo Neruda. Um, who has love poems, both beautiful and also sad. Um, I made some annotation of some poems that catch my attention, like um, I'm trying to translate from mine, like sad versus this night. There's a sentence that says, it is so short, love is so short and forget, um, forget, uh, how do you say, for, olvido is for, forgetfulness yes or oblivion so it's like love is so short and oblivion is so long i like that sentence and then he has 20, uh, 20 poems of love and a desperate song his poems are beautiful and finally there is mario vargas Llosa. his books are um about history of Latin America, like current history of Latin America, like uh, some wars in Latin America or some uh, stuff that happened in Latin America at the time that he was writing these books or a bit earlier um, around that. So it's like if Jorge Luis Borges uh, write literature about past history, mythology and so then Mario Vargas Llosa writes literature about present Latin America things. And that's all. So with this, I finish literature and also I finish modern art and I finish all the art until present times. As I said before, only missing photographic art, cinematographic art. I will do that in one stream. And then last stream will be about some missing art like music, um, decorative art, literature art, where I will talk about the contemporary authors and scientific art. And with that, I will be finished with all the art streams. So I hope you learned a lot in this. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.